question I've already asked, but mm -hmm. um, one that I'll ask again, just for the sake of the interview, is where are you from and how did you end up at okay. the conference? So I am actually originally from San Diego, California, but I study at the University of Nebraska Medical Center, so I'm here with them. I ended up here because I'm a research assistant for Dr. Ramos, who was part of the conference, so she brought her whole team with her. So it's my first year here, yeah. And what sort of things are you looking forward to as a researcher, as a student? Um, I'm really interesting to learn more about um, just the different migrant populations that are in the Midwest. Like I said, I'm from the West Coast, so it's very, very different. And I grew up right next to the U.S.-Mexico border, so that diversity was always there. So it's just interesting to see that diversity in the Midwest, too. So just kind of learning what else is going on. Yeah. yeah. And have you met anybody um, here at the conference thus far that's been interesting and met a Um. Like meeting someone personally, not yet. Just the speakers that I've been to, um, they've been good. I did the the panel where they were talking about Hispanic women in academia. So that one was pretty good, learning about them. Yeah. Cool. Would you say that's like your favorite? Was that a breakout session? Yeah. Okay. So between that one and then I went to the um, English learner breakout session too. Um, I like that one because I was an English learner growing up. So um, that one kind of like something I, there were both things I could relate to. So being Hispanic woman and also being an English learner. Yeah. And um, could you maybe describe in a little bit more detail how, like, those two um, breakout sessions, um, or how what they went like for you? Yeah. Or what they, sorry, I'm asking this question very poorly. <laughs> um, just what they were about. Okay. Um, so in the one with Hispanic women in leadership, um, they were just addressing how there's a very low percentage of Hispanic women in leadership, or at least in academia. Um, so seeing that and realizing that if I continue on with my studies, I can make a difference in that way and maybe um, something I've learned throughout the research I've done lately is like, there isn't that much representation of Hispanic people in positions like being a doctor or being a lawyer, like different things like that in academia as well too. So if I can become part of that group and then show younger people, you know, that they can actually achieve that, that'd be kind of cool. Um, and then in the English learner one, um, we just talked about like the, the knowledge gap between um, native um, English speakers and like English learners and how sometimes there's a difference. For me, the difference was made with the teachers that I had. They were very passionate about teaching, so they dedicated their time to me before and after school. But if I hadn't had that, then like I probably wouldn't be as successful as I have been thus far. Um, so maybe changing the English learner program to where there's more that one-on-one -on -one interaction with um, English learner students. Yeah. And to ask you just one final question um, is, uh, do you have any other comments about the conference in general that you would like to share before we conclude? I, I like it. Um, it's very different coming from the research perspective of it. In public health, all we've been doing is research. I'm finishing on my first year of grad school, so everything I've been doing for the last nine months has been research. So kind of seeing like the other side of it has been really interesting, the theoretical side and all that stuff, um, and seeing how like we can both work together to make a difference is kind of nice. Yeah. Sweet. That's all I have. Awesome.